Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, I promise you, I am not going to act silly throughout this whole review video, but come on into the room so we can talk about Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey, welcome. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this review video, so please make sure to press pause, go on over to Netflix, watch it. It's about an hour and 15, 20 minutes-ish long. So let me know what you thought about this movie because it is extremely spicy and we got some things to talk about. So the first thing we have to talk about is if you didn't know, this whole entire movie got leaked. I think at the beginning of this year, if I'm not mistaken, and it was either on Twitter or TikTok, but the whole movie got leaked and people saw it long before the release of the original date that this movie was supposed to come out. Even then, people were like, uh, it was trash. The other movies in the SpongeBob franchise is better. They did Sandy Cheeks dirty with this. They could have done better. There was just so much uproar about this. Now, I didn't see it when it got leaked, and I'm just now seeing it because you guys slid in my DMs wanting me to review this from a licensed therapist perspective. And by the way, if you want me to do more reviews on kid movies and kid TV shows, let me know in the comment section. I've already done stuff on Inside Out, Elemental, Pixar stuff, Nickelodeon. So if you want more of these, let me know because I don't want to give y'all stuff that y'all don't really want. The first thing we have to talk about is that family does not necessarily include blood. We see in the SpongeBob universe that there are sponges, which he doesn't even belong in the ocean, by the way. Neither does Sandy, because she's a whole entire squirrel. And we found out that she's a flying squirrel, too. Who knew? And then we have octopus and starfish and all of these different crabs and so many different types of fish, right? And while Sandy is not even supposed to be underwater, she's supposed to be on land, she developed this relationship with all of these different individuals. And instead of her really thinking that they are just her friends, they actually became like family to her. Being that the whole bikini bottom got scooped up by boots. I can't even remember what the acronym for, the Bureau of something. <laughs> But once they got scooped out of the ocean and taken on to land, she could have not cared and could have been like, I don't care what happens to y'all. I'm going back on land. I'm going to be with my family. I'm going to go back to my regular job. But she didn't do that. She cared for all of the people that she's built this relationship with over the years. And so she was determined to not only save Bikini Bottom, but make sure she saved her friends, AKA her family members too. While we're here, I'm not sure if you guys heard about this, but people have been psychoanalyzing all of the SpongeBob characters. Some people say that they have mental health issues. Some of them said that they are congruent with the seven deadly sins that are in the Bible. So some people say SpongeBob has ADHD, Patrick has Down syndrome, Squidward is depressed, and Mr. Krabs have narcissistic personality disorder. And then for the seven deadly biblical sins, they said Patrick is sloth, Gary is gluttony, Plankton is envy, Mr. Krabs is greed, Squidward is wrath, Sandy is pride, SpongeBob is lust. Not necessarily like a sexual lust, but this excessive desire to want love for other people. I think all of this came from that psychoanalyzing of Winnie the Pooh, so people started to look at other cartoons from that lens, but let me know what you guys think about that. Is there any truth to it? The second thing we have to talk about is how Sandy's biological family was extremely supportive of her. I don't know if y'all realized it, but when Sandy needed them, they showed up and they showed up again after that too. When she was about to get ate up, well, she did get bit by the snake and then she puffed up, right? When she was about to get eaten her and SpongeBob by the snakes, she did that little whistle, twisted her fingers up. <laughs> and her family came out of nowhere and whipped those snakes behind and made sure that her and SpongeBob was safe. And this comes after her being gone for a very long time, under the sea, in the ocean, doing the things that she loved. But even though she was separated from her family, they still showed her that they loved, appreciated, and missed her. You can tell that her family missed her. I don't know if those were her little siblings, but they were playful and all of those things. And even her mom 
and her uncle and her dad was just like, it's really good to see you. The third thing that I want to talk to you guys about in regards to Sandy is the career pressure from her family. Now we all know that her little squirrel cheeks family was in the circus, right? So they did all of these tips and tricks and all of these different things. And so I believe like her mom mentioned in the movie that they wanted to pass down that circus legacy to her. Her grandmother was doing it. Her mom was doing it and they thought that Sandy will follow in their footsteps. But unfortunately, Sandy had a desire and a love for marine biology. It was kind of like her mom wanted her to be a part of the circus and to stay home and to be with them more often. But her dad came behind that conversation and was very much like, regardless of what Sandy chooses to do, we love her and support her. And that's super dope. The fourth thing that I want to talk to you guys about is good intentions versus bad motives. We see that Sandy had really good intentions of being employed by Boots and going down, exploring and learning more about Bikini Bottom and getting to know all of these different people and those different creatures and all of those things. She did that. She had a good motive and her heart was in the right place. She loved marine biology, so she wanted to explore more. But she didn't know that the people she worked for, her very employer was using her and they were using her to get more intel, to get more information, to get more inside scoop about Bikini Bottom and all of the different people so they can be used to basically kind of like, create mini me's of them to exploit them so they can be used as like a little toy or something in order for the kids to love them and cuddle with them and not just feel like they are distant and far away because they live inside of the water and the ocean. The fifth and final thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is mental health. Y'all know we can't have a conversation where there's a movie, a kid's movie, adult movie, anything without talking about mental health and seeing things from that lens. We seen Sandy's mental health decline significantly once they got back to the lab, found out that they were trying to clone and duplicate SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs and Squidward and Patrick into all these little bite-sized mini-me's. I thought it was interesting that they used the word legion. And if y'all are really into the biblical thing, that that is an actual spirit in the box. Anyways, I'm not gonna go there, but they used that term legion because it was going to be many. Needless to say, we've seen her mental health go downhill when she realized that she was being used by them. They put her in the little hamster wheel and she was just going around and walking so sad and so slow and feeling like she was to blame. Then we seen the people, i.e. SpongeBob and other, they were like, oh, we can't believe Sandy used us and she wasn't our real friends. They had that moment of like, we can't believe you would do this to us, Sandy, not understanding and knowing that that wasn't her intentions or her original motive. But thank goodness, you know, we see SpongeBob come and say, hey, Sandy, we know you didn't mean it. We know that it wasn't your fault. They used you, so don't be sad, but let's get up out of here, help us. And so her demeanor, her affect, her behavior changed, and she got the umph to want to truly take Bikini Bottom and put it back inside of the ocean. But this just goes to show, like I tell you guys all the time, that people's thoughts influence their feelings, their feelings influence their behaviors, their behaviors influence the outcome, right? When Sandy thought, oh my God, I messed up, I've been used, her affect changed, she felt that way, her behavior started to be meh, nah. and then she really didn't wanna do anything. But then when she got that off and she was encouraged by her friends, AKA her little family, <laughs> she decided to want to go ahead and support and save them. And she could have stayed home and said, hey, y'all gonna be back in the ocean. I'm gonna stay here with my family. But she went back with them. And not only did she go back with them, but she allowed all of the people to come and have a little circus show at the end, including the people that worked at the lab and the factory that was doing some crazy stuff too. Now, my final thoughts on this is that they could have done Sandy Cheeks better than this. I like Sandy as a character. I think it's a little cute ideology to have a squirrel in basically like an astronaut suit underneath the ocean so she can continue to breathe and be alive. But I think they could have done better with this. I think the, I don't even know what it's called, the aesthetics of the movie, as far as including humans and the real world into like the fake world, I feel like there was a disconnect there because when they were like trying to grab 
the SpongeBob, and like it was just weird. Even the whole Wanda Sykes character and her being a robot and her loving fish. I think the storyline with that was kind of odd. So if I'm honest, I would give this like a four or a five out of 10. What would you give it? So thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, stay connected with me, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.